So there's a meditation practice that I call space time bridging, and it's a very simple meditation. It can impact everything from your sleep to your mood, alleviate symptoms of depression, and can be used to enhance focus and other states of mind that are useful for work and other aspects of life. It's very simple. What you do is you essentially There are many, a dozen or more clear benefits of a regular meditation practice. Normally we are splitting our attention, our perception that is, to multiple things, our sensation and our thoughts. When we put all of our perception into our thoughts, we see how disorganized, how wandering they are and how, in fact, how random and intrusive those can be. Which leads me to the statement that I believe that most people have an interoceptive bias. They're focused more on what's going on internally than they are focused on what's happening externally. We hear so often about the need to do a meditation practice that allows us to focus inward and that we're getting yanked around by all the stressors of life, et cetera, et cetera. And we are, we're getting yanked around by all the stressors and demands of life. But as we do that, we tend to be very focused on what's happening with us. The data clearly point to the fact that being mindful and being aware can enhance one's level of presence and happiness, but we can go so far as to say that being mindful and aware of what's happening, not just with us, but external to us in our immediate environment, that includes what other people are saying and doing, that also can really enhance our sense of well-being and happiness. I'm guessing some of you are probably wondering where to start. For that reason, I just wanted to offer you a particular form of meditation that, for lack of a better name, I called STB or space-time bridging. And the time component has to do with a very simple fact, which is when we focus our attention, visual attention or otherwise, on things close to or within our body, we tend to be fine slicing time. You can sort of think of your breath as more or less the second hands on your clock of existence. Whereas when we tend to focus on things far away from us, we tend to parse or carve up time within bigger bins. If you've ever seen a, a airplane flying uh, at a distance, it looks like it's moving very, very slowly. If you were right up next to that airplane, it's probably going five or 600 miles an hour. It would go by very quickly. This is not a coincidence. Believe it or not, how you slice the time domain of your life and your experience has everything to do with your vision. And the closer things are, the more finely you slice up time. The more closely your attention is placed on yourself, the more closely you slice up time. If you focus your visual attention very far, or you think about the other side of the world, for instance, and you envision that, well, then you're actually slicing time more broadly. So there's a meditation practice that I call space-time bridging that incorporates everything that I've talked about today. It balances interoception and exteroception. It balances interoception and dissociation, and it crosses the various time domains that the brain can encompass using vision. And it's a very simple meditation. It's one that I've been doing for years and it's one that we're starting to do some research on, but I'm just gonna share with you because I think it's actually quite fun and can be quite informative. In fact, um, people have told me that it can even lead to some interesting insights, both during the meditation and, be, and outside the meditation. It's very simple. What you do, ideally you would do this outside or at a window, but what you do is you essentially close your eyes and you focus your attention either on your third eye center or your breathing, and you try and put 100% of your perceptual awareness onto your breathing or your third eye center for the duration of three breaths. Okay, so you're 100% or trying to be 100% in interoception. Then you open your eyes, you focus on the surface of your body someplace. I, I find that um, holding out my hand at sort of arm's distance and focusing on the palm of my hand and focusing there visually. So I'm splitting my attention now between my hand and I'm also going to pay attention to my breath for the duration of three full inhales and exhales while also focusing on my hand. So you're splitting interoception and exteroception as best you can about 50-50. Then you subsequently look at some location in your immediate environment, maybe 10, 15 feet away, and you focus your attention on that location while also splitting your attention so that you're still paying attention to your breathing, you do that for the duration of three breaths. But now you are in exteroception and interoception. Then you focus your attention at some distance further away, maybe the furthest distance you can see. Now, this is why it's useful to do out of a window or on a balcony or outdoors. You focus on the furthest point, maybe a horizon, some furthest point for the duration of three breaths while also paying attention to your breathing and sort of imagine a bridge between the two if you, uh, if you find it to be challenging to focus on both. And then, and this is where it can be a little tricky, but then what you actually focus on is the fact, and this is not an imaginary thing, this is a fact that you are a tiny speck 
on this big ball that's floating out in space, right? Uh, the earth that's floating out in space. And you try and focus on the, your three breaths while also acknowledging that you are a small body, literally, on this very seemingly large body, the earth, but that's floating in a much larger, larger, expansive place, the universe. And you do that for three breaths. And then you close your eyes and you go right back into interoception. And you do that for three breaths. You focus on your interoception for three breaths. And you might wanna march through these different locations a few times or back and forth if you like, but typically I will just do it for one segment at pure interoception, palm of hand, some distance in front of me, horizon, whole globe, universe thing, back into body, et cetera. Why is this useful? Why would this be useful? Why is it at all interesting? Or is this just some crazy idea? The reason it's useful, I believe, is that it has you deliberately step your awareness, your perception through every position along that interoceptive, exteroceptive continuum. By stepping through these different locations and then deliberately placing your perception, your awareness back into pure interoception, what you do is you essentially are practicing or exercising this incredible ability that the human mind has to deliberately place your perception at specific locations along the interoceptive exteroceptive continuum. And I think this is very useful because many of us, including myself, tend to get locked at one location along that continuum. For instance, if you're scrolling your phone for a long period of time, you may forget about your bodily sensations, but you generally forget about other things going on in the world. Or if you're very focused on things that out in the world, you oftentimes can forget about your internal sensations and what's going on internally. And being functional in work, in life, in relationship, in, in all aspects, including your ability to fall asleep, involves stepping yourself along these different locations, which again, are not just physical locations of third eye center, or your breathing, or your hand, or horizon. Those are just stations within space. But remember, each one of those, just by way of the how your visual system and the time domain are interlocked with one another sets your mind in a particular time domain. And so much of what involves being a functional human being involves dynamically adjusting our attention from what we are doing on our computer to a question somebody asks and then back again, or from text messaging to listening to a lecture or a podcast, or from listening to a lecture or podcast, and then going back into a mode of commuting, but making that commute either relaxing or maybe you do work on your commute or connect with family or friends, et cetera. So much of the fatigue of life and the maladaptive behaviors and emotions that show up in life are really not about any set of behaviors or emotions being wrong or right, but rather inappropriately matched to the space-time domain that we're in, which again is just fancy nerd speak for saying being present and being mindful is a wonderful byproduct of a meditation practice, but it is but one of those stations along that space-time continuum. The key element here is to step yourself through a practice deliberately so that you are flexibly and dynamically able to engage in conversation, then disengage and focus or focus and then disengage from the work you're focusing on and actually have a conversation or be in the world and move out of that interoceptive awareness to one in which you are dynamically engaged with the things around you.